really can. Uh, thank, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll spare uh, I'll spare everyone the uh, the plug that I was going to make for our presentations at tomorrow's conference. But uh, uh, you know, hope, hope to see you all there. Um, and uh, and thanks once again. Uh, you know, Zach, uh, Ken, uh, uh, Michael, everyone uh, for inviting us, uh, Sydney. Uh, Sean, that for inviting us to uh, to, to present uh, to you here. Uh, so I, I just want to say a few words uh, before we hand this all over to Caitlin. We'll give you the real lowdown. Uh, this project, uh, six sixty nine St. Mark's, is a very special project for our firm. Um, after a long career, including some work on some uh, landmark green building projects, I started up Cycle in two thousand seven with a commitment to what was then called uh, sustainable design uh, and a desire to participate in the remaking of New York City as a green paradise. But for many years through the recession and beyond, we really had to struggle uh, to make it by with whatever work we could find. And we found that many of our clients were not receptive to arguments in favor of designing for energy efficiency, much less you know, high energy performance. They said, it was just too complicated and cost too much. So um, our solution was just to, uh, uh, to, to find better clients, of course. I first met Massimo Coco uh, working on a project that was really pure service. I was helping him solve a vexing problem in a loft law building with the Department of Buildings and New York City bureaucracy. But, you know, we started a, a you know, a friendly relationship. And uh, he, he asked me for my take on a property in Crown Heights. Uh, and uh, in addition to giving him the, you know, the zoning and development prospects, uh, as I saw them, uh, I said, uh, why don't we try and build a passive house there? And his response was, well, you know how to do that in New York? And I'll tell you, Caitlin and I had been waiting for that for a long time. And uh, this is a great opportunity for us. And uh, I'll let uh, Caitlin explain uh, the rest of it to you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, hi, everyone. I had a whole seamless segue plan that would jump, have me jump right into the rest of this. But I, I actually want to start off by thanking the Passive House Accelerator uh, team for having us today at a time that seems to be uh, full of reawakening and to thank them for what they do. I almost wore my Passive House Accelerator shirt today, but I realized too late that it's in the laundry. So, because um, I wore it recently, obviously. And, and, and just quickly, I, I felt so lucky to have won uh, a shirt in a random wheel giveaway. And this was over a year ago. Uh, I think it was maybe the third happy hour of the second year, which took place despite us all uh, being in the very depths of the pandemic. And it happened to be the first one I attended. Uh, and I'd been holed up at a at the time in a remote family uh, home with shoddy internet, so it was a little jittery. And and yet after joining just one meeting, I won a shirt, and I thought how fun. But beyond the shirt, that evening I found this community, which is I've learned over the last fifteen months or so, consistent in its dedication to bringing important building science and memorable projects to this global audience and also to keeping us focused on our goals to make the built environment better, even when so much else seemed uncertain. And it's always fast, factual, and actually fun. Uh, so I'm, I'm very grateful for the organizers and for all of you who continue to show up here uh, to learn and to do the work. When Cycle was asked to speak to this group of amazing students of the game, as I call them, there was no way we could say no. Though we at Cycle are dedicated to the principles I think we all represent, this case study is in fact Cycle's first uh, project going for certification as a passive house. So we appreciate your tolerance as we present things you may have seen before. And we also very much look forward to a lively conversation at the end. So talk to you all soon. Without further ado, here's a bit of our journey uh, with our first passive house. Our client in this endeavor is another stalwart, <clears throat> Massimo, who's an Italian real estate develop, developer with a record of completing award-winning energy efficient buildings in Italy, 
held from the outset that a well-designed and highly energy efficient building is already business as usual. Uh, he staked his claim on the fact that this project with those non-negotiable facets of the Casa Passiva must also work as a real estate venture in New York. His confidence and drive uh, helped us to rally our New York based team around passive house principles for the project, which is now in construction as you saw in the previous slide. Uh, the project was awarded, as Ken mentioned, the Buildings of Excellence Award, which is administered by the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, or uh, henceforth called NYSERDA, during late design as a low to zero carbon design building. Uh, Buildings of Excellence was at the time, I think, the only competition uh, of its kind in the nation and continues to lead the way in spotlighting carbon neutral building performance in New York State. The award recognizes that winners represent significant advancement in construction practices and points the way toward a zero carbon future for buildings that can be replicated at scale. Uh, I don't work for NYSERDA, but here's some information about the competition. And I'm told an announcement for round three is forthcoming sometime later this year. Uh, and also worth noting, this is MassMark's first development venture in the United States and has been pre-certified so far as a passive, uh, uh, pre-certified by the Passive House Institute. Okay, onward. For anyone who may not be aware, Brooklyn is a crucible of creative energy within New York City. In Brooklyn, our client found a marketplace that appreciates value of these first principles and engaged a team to help improve it. Our client hired Compass, a leading local real estate and marketing uh, team, and our teams worked together from schematic design to fully leverage their understanding of the market and to educate their marketing team actually about the first principles in order to illuminate how energy efficiency in buildings could serve as the foremost of four branding pillars in the overall marketing strategy. And those who aren't aware, Passive House Accelerator has made a bunch of awesome graphics that are available for free download on their website, should you want them, or they be helpful to you in telling someone about your work. Uh, the current draft of the marketing strategy establishes Passive House standards and sustainability as priorities, which enhance the resident's quality of life and net return on investment while reducing operating costs. It highlights that the drastically reduced energy and operating costs of the building accrue to the benefit of all owner occupants and will increase the value of each unit. Uh, it highlights the location of central Brooklyn uh, that is well served by all manner of transit, numerous amenities, ample recreational and cultural opportunities for its residents. And it displays an aesthetic, and I'm not, no, uh, sorry. It displays an aesthetic of modern detail oriented architecture that is respectful to historic, uh, to its historic neighborhood. And it also shows off the optimized layouts appliances and ample natural light this, uh, that the, the building offers. Uh, this project actually increases the density of the site. Uh, so we think that that means that it provides an opportunity for a lower carbon footprint per occupant because you can walk, you can take the train, you can get to the park, you can rent a bike, you can do all the things from this place. Uh, by combining a low carbon footprint for the building occupants together with the building's highly energy efficient performance, we think this project points to an improved paradigm uh, for urban infill housing. Uh, the entire design and marketing team were connected uh, through previous experience working together, which is always helpful. Uh, and an integrated project delivery strategy along with the developer, architect and MEP's engineer uh, MEP engineers familiarity with passive house principles enabled us to identify and apply successful strategies for energy efficient design early in the project. Uh, EP engineering who designed the MEP fire safety systems and uh, a bunch of other stuff <laughs> was a key asset to our team and deserves more than a nod here. They worked tirelessly to find answers to our endless questions and considerations for systems that weren't quite on American shores when we were designing this project. Um, 
Additionally, the project is notable for involving Mark Harari's team at PHB Catalyst as a construction manager uh, at the very beginning of the project to refine proposed building systems and means and methods of construction. Uh, and this was due to concerns about meeting budget constraints at the startup design. It is worth noting that from the outside, from the outset, uh, this building was planned to meet passive house standards. No comparison was ever taken uh, with less energy efficient buildings or less efficient building strategies. However, catalyst feedback throughout the design process allowed us to adjust and clarify the project scope to meet the project budget without impacting those non-negotiables. Uh, this exercise was important and demonstrated that the biggest impacts to project costs and the greatest savings actually in time and money were found in systems other than the energy and closure systems. Uh, where we found those savings was in the building structural system, the foundation, uh, strategy, site connections that we could get rid of and the plumbing systems. In terms of rec replicability, the most unusual characteristic of this building actually is its site. Where most buildings in New York City are on 100 foot deep lots or even shallower, which equates to about 30 meters for those who aren't are using a more advanced measuring system than me. Uh, this is about, this lot is 125 feet deep or 38 meters, give or take, by 40 feet, which is about 12 meters. The building takes full advantage of the larger site. Did I miss a slide? Here it is. Um, for an eight foot side, uh, side yard. This side yard allows for windows all along the east side of the building, which is not particularly common opportunity in New York City. Still, there are design features that can easily be replicated throughout this city or any other, including the features that we were holding as non-negotiables. They say, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. So what does the business as usual equate to in this project? Uh, what are the non-negotiable aspects of the design? This, look, this list will look familiar and includes uh, a compact building form and simplified geometry, a well-insulated building enclosure with minimized thermal bridging, uh, an airtight envelope, high efficiency heating and cooling, all electric uh, heat pump water heaters, and you can see some of the products here, high efficiency energy recovery ventilation, uh, PHI certified triple glazed windows. These were provided by Clearwall. Uh, an on site PV renewable energy to help further reduce grid dependence. We've also removed all piped connections required to deliver fossil fuel uh, in favor of efficient all electric systems that you've seen. Passive shading design, which is incorporated into rain screen and brick detailing. Uh, and the project specs include detailed requirements to ensure quality control, including mandatory air sealing, thermal bridge training for a contractor and its, and its employees. Uh, and just a quick plug or request for qualifications, the owner and contractor are currently seeking to engage a representative who in addition to our design team will observe construction to help us ensure that the design objectives are met. Uh, so we are accepting proposals. Um, in addition to designing for energy efficiency, the project is designed for occupant health and safety, as well as comfort. Each unit has windows on at least two sides and some have windows on three sides. All four sides of the buildings have window, which is a rare occurrence uh, in dense urban areas and it provides beautiful light uh, slide for this. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to jump around a little bit. Uh, and a kind of remarkable, beautiful view of the backyard condition in this particular project. Um, the building's windows will provide for thermal comfort even on New York City's coldest winter days and acoustic separation from the street. Every unit will have its own uh, private outdoor space. This is this graphic here. Um, and a public outdoor roof is also provided for residents to share. Uh, the building as designed is foam free uh, using mineral wool and de dense plaque cellulose, which we thought was important um, instead of polyiso and other plastics. 
There are additional requirements for the recycled content of finishes uh, and the use of FSC certified wood. Uh, Cycle also applied uh, New York City's zero waste design guidelines and every unit has been designed with separate receptacles for waste, recycling, compostables, and all of these correspond to the building's dedicated chutes for each type of waste that are collected at the cellar level. Uh, the new building footprint actually resulted in a reduction in impervious site areas. So we designed an on-site water management system in the backyard, which will reduce uh, stress on the city sewer system. Cycle also worked with local salvage shops and community collectors uh, to reclaim existing building materials from the existing building and, uh, and, and try to divert as much of it as possible from landfills. Uh, this work included removal of doors, hardware, decorative exterior metal grating, copings, sills, fireplace decorations, plaster detailing, um, some areas of historic flooring and the entire uh, interior stair and railing was preserved. Uh, contextual consideration has been made for the brick proportions used on the facade. Detailing such as cornices and window surrounds gesture towards architectural context of the block, which was mostly constructed over a century ago. However, the design approach is blended and the building will stand out as contemporary through the utilization of integrated facade plantings and large glazed window openings. This is a recent rendering, so pardon its departure from our design. <laughs> and finally, the PV system, oh, this is, right, okay, this is where we see the plantings. This is the, um, this neighboring building has this crazy vine and, and we thought to highlight that view with all of ours and kind of make a green, green enclosure backyard that we're pretty excited about. And finally, uh, the PV system financing and rebate structuring is still being reviewed. Uh, however, an early strategy establishes that a developer or a third party will be introduced to install and operate the solar submetering and submarine sub, sub metering system. This solar owner will sell the solar energy to the condo owners, offsetting all energy needed by the residents with 100% or nearly 100% solar energy, which will be enshrined in the condo lease agreement. As New York State's grid becomes cleaner in order to achieve its goals for 100% renewable grid, we can estimate that all electric building will become carbon neutral from an energy standpoint anyway by 2040. Uh, residents will be able to claim a state tax credit for the energy they purchase from the developer and the solar owning entity can anticipate a five or so year return on investment and nearly $170,000 in revenue from the sale of energy over 25 years to the building. The benefits of a renewable power source are in a way shared by all. Uh, the community solar concept, as we're calling it, uh, for this installation is also replicable to the extent that there's a market for renewable electricity in New York State. Um, and my last slide, I think, uh, here is basically NYSERDA's Buildings of Excellence Award criteria and how important, I just wanted to highlight how important passive house design standards were in making a case for this project. Um, that concludes my bit, but we are so happy to be able to share this with you all and we're excited now for the liveliest Q&A if we could.